Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to do another index review. Um, so far it's been by far the most popular video I've released. Obviously it's early days only in the channel for a couple of weeks but uh, I previously did a index review on the Adeptus Mechanicus and Skitari and the Colt Mechanicus and it's been by far the most popular video getting three times the views of any other so I wanted to uh, do another one. Um, we're going to do another popular race today, uh, or a heavily collected race. Anyway, popular depends obviously on your opinion, um, but certainly a lot of people collect them. Uh, so we're going to go for Necrons. Uh, very popular in the previous edition. Obviously, the models are really nice. Um, they've had pretty cons consistent releases recently. Um, some really cool background. Um, for for those that don't know, it's sort of a, who may be new to the hobby. It's kind of a mix between the Terminator and Egyptian history. If you kind of look at a mix of that, that's kind of where they are. Um, for those who know them better, obviously you probably know them as a pretty solid force on the tabletop. So we're gonna have a look through their index. Uh, in this first video, we're gonna do HQ and troops. And then I'm going to do a part two and three where we start looking at elite, fast attack, host support, and um, super heavies, uh, which they've got a few of as well. So we'll get started straight away, get to the action for you guys, and we can start looking at what the Necrons might be like in 8th edition. So, got a bit of Necron background there, going through the different dynasties. Obviously the Sotek dynasty, so in the new background, are the dominant dynasty as they were in the previous background with Imhotek leading them. Okay, so... It's so a Necron army list, obviously we've got the keyword dynasty, um, just like we have in all the other different lists. So we have got a few rules, uh, we've got reanimation protocols, now reanimation protocols has is, is always been quite a cool rule, really core to the Necron survival, but they've actually got better in this edition. So the way it works now is when a model's slain, you just um, put it to one side, on the f lay down by one of your units, at the beginning of your turn, on a 5+, plus, the model's reanimation protocols activate and it is returned to the unit. Now, that sounds worse because you used to do it in 7th straight after. It was just like an extra save. It's like feel no pain almost. But the reason it's better now is if you don't roll a 5+, plus, they remain inactive and you roll again at the start of every subsequent turn as long as the unit hasn't been destroyed. So basically, if you're playing against Necrons now, if you're an Eldar player and you're going to play against Necrons, destroy whole units. You have to destroy whole units because if there's 50 Necron Warriors and you destroy them down to one man and a Crypt Tech, they're going to roll at the start of the next turn on a 4-up because the Crypt Tech still give the boost. So out of the 15, 7 or 8 are going to come back average rolling. Obviously they might roll really well and get 10 back. And all of a sudden you're facing a near full strength Necron Warrior squad and you've, wa you've wasted a lot of firepower. So reanimation protocols are back and they're awesome and Necron players are really going to enjoy them, I think. You also have Living Metal. So Living Metal, at the beginning of your turn, the unit recovers one wound lost during the battle. So Living Metal is now like reanimation protocols, but for vehicles. Again, it's at the beginning of each of your turns. Now you auto get a wound back. Now, it, it is very good. It's not incredible because it is one wound. Obviously, vehicles have got lots of wounds now because... Weapons can take D6, D6, plus 3, etc. Uh, wounds off you. But still, getting a wound back every turn just allows that grinding effect again of the Necron. So that, that's cool. You've then got the powers of the Satan. There's three here. So the first one is Antimatter Meteor, which is raw D6 on a 2+, plus, the closest visible enemy unit within 24 inches of the Satan shard suffers D3 more wounds. It's a bit unpredictable, considering, um, but you don't have to cast it. So it's just on a 2+. Plus they get D3 mortal wounds, so that's really cool that you don't have to cast it. The, the effect's good, but it's a bit unpredictable, but no casting. Times arrow, pick an enemy unit in 24 inches, roll D6. If the result is higher than the unit's wounds characteristic, one model from the unit is slain. Again, doesn't sound amazing, but obviously you could fire that at something with four or five wounds and you might just slay it outright. Seismic assault, roll D6 for each model in the closest enemy unit within 24 inches. For each roll of a six, the unit suffers more wound. So obviously get him near a unit of 30 orcs and you're gonna slay six or seven outright. So that, that's pretty good. So not amazing powers, but they're all good and solid and you don't have to cast them. You don't have to worry about perils. So happy really. Okay, 
So HQ choices. So we're going to try and get through these reasonably quickly. I'm going to establish now that when I say an average Lord kind of stat line, um, I mean what the the Overlord and Lord have got, which is sort of weapon skill three or two plus, strength toughness five, four or five wounds, three attacks, leisure ten, three plus save, something around that. So it's just so I don't have to read out every stat line, which drones on a little bit to you guys, I'm sure, but also um, lets me get through this a little quicker. So that's kind of the stat line we're looking at. So the first unit is Imitet the Stormlord. Again, got a pretty standard uh, Lord stat line. The only difference is he has six wounds, so he is very survivable, five inch move. Um, he comes with a Staff of the Destroyer and a Gauntlet of Fire. So the Gauntlet of Fire is an eight inch range, Assault D6, Strength 4, AP Dash, Damage 1, and it also makes hits target. So it's just a flamer, really, the Gauntlet of Fire. Nothing to shout about, it's just a basic flamer. You've then got the Staff of the Destroyer. It does shooting and melee. Shooting, it's three shots at 18 inches, strength six, AP minus three, damage two. So that, that's really nice. Um, it's a decent range, you're gonna be hitting on twos. You've got guaranteed three shots. Not, no one's gonna get a great save from it and you're doing guaranteed two damage, it's pretty nice. In combat, it's the exact same thing, it's just that it's with the attacks and strength of the bearer. The attacks, the image that tech have is three, and he has strength five. So, it's pretty good. He has living metal. He has Blood Swarm Necro Scarabs, which is you can reroll hit rolls of one for friendly units, uh, of flayed ones that are within 12 inches. So if you want to take flayed ones, he gives them a bit of a boost. He has My Will Be Done, which a lot of the Overlords have, which is you choose a friendly Necron Infantry unit within 6 inches of Imitech at the start of each turn, and you can add one to the advanced charge and hit rolls of them until the beginning of next turn. So it's nice, boosts up a unit nearby, especially the uh, hit rolls, really nice. Phase Shifter, so he has a 4 plus invulnerable. Undying, he regains D3 lost wounds at the beginning of your each turn, rather than 1 for living metal. So that's really nice, so D3 wounds back every turn. And he has 6 to start. Lord of the Storm, once per battle in your shooting phase, Imitek can call the Storm. When he does so, pick an enemy unit within 48 inches, so good range, other than a character. Roar a D6, on a 1 nothing happens, but on a 2 plus the unit suffers that many mortal wounds. Ooh. Then roll a d6 for each enemy unit within 6 inches on a roll of a 6 units so d3 more wounds. So it's only once per battle, the lightning, but it is pretty nasty. On a 2+, plus, they suffer as many more wounds as you've rolled, and anyone within 6 inches on a roll of a 6 gets d3 more wounds. So you have two chances to hit each unit. That's really nice. So Imitech's pretty good. He's got a cool ability there. So we'll see how many points... He is. So Imotech is two two eight. So I think I think he's pretty good for that. I mean, he's pretty solid in combat. He's got some good shooting. He's got some good rules. Gets the Lord of the Storm, which is going to do quite a bit of damage in most games. So yeah, pretty pretty handy. Pretty handy. Probably better than he was in the last edition. So you got Overlord and the Lord. Um, again, both got pretty standard. Lord stat lines. Uh, the only difference is the Overlord has a two plus weapon skill ballistic rather than three plus, uh, and he has five wounds, so reasonably similar. They both come with the Staff of Light. The Staff of Light is 12 inch shooting, assault three, strength five, AP minus two, damage one. So again, pretty solid. Um, and in melee, it's minus two AP, damage one. Um, with their three attacks and strength five, so again, not not too bad. The Staff of Light's okay. Um, he can replace Staff of Light with a weapon from the melee weapons list, which he probably will. Most people are going to go for a War Scythe. He can actually have a Resurrection Orb as well, and the Resurrection Orb is really cool. So the Resurrection Orb, if this model is a Resurrection Orb, once per battle, immediately after you've made your Reanimation Protocols roll, you can make the Reanimation Protocol roll again, as long as they're within three inches of the Lord or Overlord. It can only be used once per battle, but obviously you can have multiple characters with them. So basically, you roll 4+, plus and then you roll 4+, plus again, and you can pretty much negate a shooting phase, really. So that's really cool. Um, the Overlord has Living Metal, Resurrection Orb, Phase Shifter, and My Will Be Done, which are all rules we've been through. The Lord comes with Living Metal and a Resurrection Orb, but he also gets the Lord's Will, which is you can reroll failed morale tests for friendly dice units within 6 inches. That's nice, um, obviously morale being much more important now. And it's nice that the Overlord and Lord can be taken together and actually give you different advantages. It's not just take the Overlord because he's better, or if you're playing achievement, 
game take the Lord because he's not as expensive and then that's kind of it. Really nice that they give you different advantages so you can play both of them. So that's nice. Obviously Necrons are generally leash of 10, 9 so obviously it, it, it's still useful though because um, you can lose things quickly now to morale tests. So um, let's see how much they are. So the Lord is 73 base. The Overlord is 101 base, so it's about right. They're both they're both worth those, and you can give them weapons like um, a War Scythe for 11 points. Believe me, the War Scythe for 11 points is crazy. Um, where is it? War Scythe. Do, 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 do. It's plus two strength, AP minus four, damage two. I know it's not maybe quite as good as it used to be, but that for 11 points is epic. Uh, you can also give him. Um, other things like the resurrection orbs, thirty-five points if they don't come with it. So there's a there's a fair bit of equipment there for you to take. So you've then got the Cryptech. Uh, he's got a pretty standard law stat line again. His strength toughness four. That's the main difference in a four plus save. So he's he's not quite as tough. Comes to the staff of light again. Staff of light shooting and melee we've covered. He has living metal which we know about. He has two specials so chromatron. Units within 3 inches of this unit have a 5 percent run save against ranged weapons. So again, just controlling time as Cryptex are able to do in certain circumstances. 5 percent vulnerable save for units around him from shooting, which is pretty good. And Technomancer, which is add one to reanimation protocols with units within 3 inches. So both of those are going to affect probably 2 units. So place them in the middle, the 2 units either side, and they'll both probably get the buffs. So that's quite good. Cryptex will set you back. 86 points, which are, you know he's well worth. Um, obviously, none of this is including the equipment, by the way, when I quote these points, but we know roughly what, what it is. Um, I think he's well worth it for those advantages. And you know he's, he's not a weakling, he's got four wounds, so you know he, he can handle himself. Destroyer Lord. So again, kind of standard Necronaut stat line, but he has six wounds and he's toughness six, and he has a move of ten, so he's faster and he is tougher. Comes to Staff of Light again. Um, he can have a melee weapon. He also um, may take either Phylactery or Resurrection Orb. So Phylactery is you gain D3 lost wounds back at the beginning of your turn rather than one from Living Metal. So it's just a boost to your Living Metal, but it's a really cool rule, especially for someone with six wounds and toughness six, makes him so hard to kill. He also has Hardwired Hatred. You can reroll hit rolls of one for this model, so kind of preferred enemy, which is quite nice. United in Hatred. You can reroll wound rolls of one in the shooting phase for this model and mods within six inches. Oh, sorry, um, friendly destroyer and heavy destroyer units within six inches, and he has fate shifter. One thing I really like about that is it encourages you to take destroyer and heavy destroyer units. Firstly, units you didn't really see in the last edition. Secondly, also units that would hang around with him. He's a destroyer lord, so why wouldn't he be with destroyers? So I quite like that. The destroyer lord is base will set you back 124. Again, well worth it. He's got toughness six and six wounds. He's got a shooting weapon. He has living metal, phylactery, etc. So. He's uh, he's pretty good. Uh, Nemesis Sandrek. So standard Necron Lord Satline. The only thing to highlight again is we uh, Wound 6. So he's pretty tough. Comes with Staff of Light. Living Metal. Phase Shifter. Uh, my Will Be Done. Um, but he has two extra rules. So he has Counter Tactics, which is really cool. So... Um, at the beginning of your opponent's turn, so you can change each turn, choose one enemy character within 12 inches as an Andrek. Any aura abilities that character has don't work, which is really cool. So I, or my guy, lets everyone reroll ones for shooting in 6 inches. Now he doesn't. I think that's a much better version of what he had in the last edition. I think there's going to be auras left, right and centre in the new edition, so that's really cool. He also gets uh, Transient Madness, which is raw D3 for Nemesis Zendrek at the beginning of each of your turns and consult the following table. Choose a friendly unit to get the boon. So you either get plus one attack, plus one bliss skill, well, plus one to hit, um, or you get reroll failed charge roll. So it's random, but they're, they're all pretty solid. The reroll charge rolls isn't necessarily amazing, but it's not too bad. Uh, Nemesis Zendrek will set you back. Do, 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 do. Do 180. Probably maybe slightly expensive considering that's ra the transient Madison. This is random and character tactics. You've got to be within 12, but not not too bad. Not too bad. Vargard Oberon. Uh, get standard Necron stat line. Um, really six wounds again though. He comes armed with a war scythe though, so you do get a war scythe, uh, which we've been through. Living metal. The Lord's will, but he does get three special rules. 
Cleave and counter blow. If he's slain during the fight phase, he still gets to fight. So that's cool, so you can leave him till later if he's got one wound left, because you know he's probably going to die, but you can fight with him later because you know he's still going to attack. Ghost Walk Mantle, which is the one where he can zoom over the board to Zandrek, so he lands within six inches of Zandrek, basically, uh, at the beginning of any of your movement phases. And then the Bar Guard's duty, roll d6 each time Nemesis Zandrek loses a wound while he's within three inches of Oberon. On a two plus, Oberon it intercepts it, but he does um, suffer a mortal wound for it. So it's not just that um, he takes a wound, he actually takes a mortal wound, so there's no, there's no saves. Bar Guard Oberon is 151. So again, like, like now is a Zendrek, probably worth it, but not, not more so than worth it. He's, he's, he's pretty good. So we've got Illuminar Cesarus. Um, definitely a standard Necron Lord stat line there. He has an Eldritch Lance. The Eldritch Lance shooting is 36 inches, really good range. Assault 1, Strength A, AP-4, Damage D6. So effectively he has a Last Cannon each turn, um, or a Lance weapon. So that's pretty cool. He's hitting on threes, so it's, it's fairly consistent. You think you sit at the back of the board if he's in a shooting Necron army. Just pound away, it's an extra shooting weapon per turn. No bad thing there. Uh, in combat as well, it is minus two AP and damage one. So it's, it's not great, but it's it's okay. You know, at least he can defend himself. He has Living Metal, and he has Master Technomancer. So it's add one to all reanimation protocols for models from friendly units within three inches. So, um, I assume that's better than the standard Cryptek. Add one to all reanimation protocols within three inches. So all reanimation protocols for models from friendly Necronics within three inches. Seems to be exactly the same. Okay, cool. Okay, it seems to be exactly the same. So correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Put it in the comment section if that's wrong. But mass tech mancers just seems to be the tech mancer rule. The only added bit is it says you can't benefit from both. But he still does that, so that's, that's not a bad thing. It's a good rule. The um, boosting up of reanimation protocols. And at the end, of, especially his, you can re-roll them as much as you want now. Roll them every turn. At the start of each of his movement phases, Cerus uh, can augment one unit of Necron Warriors and, uh, or Immortals that is within one inch of him. So basically he's got it right there. Roll a d3 to see what they gain for the rest of the battle. Plus one strength, plus one toughness, or boost their bliss skill. A unit can only be enhanced once. But what's really crucial about that, which is what makes him good, is that if you start him right next to two units, you can roll for one in the first turn and roll for the next one in the second turn. So although it's random, the bonuses are generally good, but also you can apply them to multiple units, which is really good. Really good. So you can have two and more units. One's toughness five, one's hitting on twos. You know, really cool. So he's 143. Which again is about right because he's got a bit of a weaker stat line. So although the rules are as good as most of the others, his stat line is a little weak. So that's about right. Orokin the Diviner. So this is the guy who turns into a mini Satan uh, for those who haven't seen him before. So he has a 5 inch move. So he has a general standard stat line but he only has 2 attacks. So it's slightly weaker than normal. He comes with the Staff of Tomorrow. So he has Living Metal, he has Master Chromancer, which is uh, units within 6 inches of a 5 plus invulnerable save, which is really cool. He has Technomancer, so everyone gets plus 1 to the reanimation protocols within 3 inches. And he gets the Stars Are Right. So the Stars Are Right are all D6 at the start of each of your turns. If the result is less than the current battle round number, Oricon uses the Oricon Empowered Profile for the rest of the game. Now this is suddenly Weapon Skill Ballistic 2 plus, Strength and Toughness 7, 7 wounds, Four attacks, leash at 10, four plus save. He does keep any wounds he's already got though. But that's really awesome. So you can hide him at the back of the board. Again, suitable to a shooting Necron army. The enemy takes two or three turns to get to you. He changes and then he can be part of your counter attack. Because he is really solid when he does that. Especially as the Staff of Tomorrow, which is a melee weapon. It's strength the user, but if you strength seven, minus three AP and D3 damage. So you can imagine him with seven, uh, sorry, Four wounds, strength seven, minus three AP, D3 damage, and he rerolls failed hit rolls this weapon. So the fact that four attacks is good but not insane, when you're rerolling twos to hit, you're, <laughs> you're going to hit quite a lot. So I really like him. He's currently in uh, my Necron army, uh, which I'll do a showcase for at some point. Um, I think he's really cool. He is uh, 143. 
which I think is a bit of a steal, I must say, for him, just because um, you get the Technomancer, Chromancer, and then you get the boost of the Good Fighter as well. So he's one of the best ones we've come across so far. Uh, you have Anrakia the Traveller, standard stat line, but he has Strength 6, Wound 6. Uh, he has a Tachyon Arrow and a War Scythe. The Tachyon Arrow is Assault 1, 120 inch range, Strength 10, AP minus 5, D6 damage, but you can't use it once per battle, but you are hitting on 2s, so it's pretty reliable. And he's got a War Scythe, which we already covered. Living Metal, Phase Shifter, My Will Be Done. He has Lord of the Legions, which is add 1 to the attack's characteristic of anyone nearby. So because he's good in combat and because he's adding uh, one to the attacks profile, it's good to have him in a combat unit. Mind of the Machine, once per turn, you can try and take over a unit with a vehicle within 12 inches. On a 4+, plus, you choose to fire one of the weapons. Really nice bonus. You get within 12 inches of a Lean Russ. You can fire the main battle cannon at someone. Obviously, that's pretty awesome. So I still like, like Amrikira Traveller. I have got the model, but I haven't really used him yet. 167, not bad. He is pretty tank in combat, and he has got some cool rules. So again, I think he's worth it. Trazin the Infinite, he's taken a bit of a hit. I've already looked at his profile, I don't think he's particularly good. Uh, standard stat line, um, his weapon's plus two strength, minus one AP and D3 damage. If a character is slain by this weapon, each unit in six inches front of phone, take D3 more wounds. So that is a pretty good weapon. So he's, he's quite good in combat. He gets Living Metal, Phase Shifter, My Will Be Done. And his surrogate host is the same thing that when he dies on a 2 plus, if you've got another Necron Lord or Overlord, he can take over their body. Um, but he's he's 139 now, so he has come down in points. So he's probably worth taking just on that note. I think he's got a little bit worse, um, but he doesn't cost as much anymore either. Um, the Catacomb Command Barge um, has 8 wounds, pretty much a Necron Lord stat line, but it's 12 inch move and 8 wounds. So a bit of extra wounds there, which is good. Um, it can take a variety of different weapons. It has Living Metal, Resurrection Orb Explodes, Quantum Shielding, which I haven't come across yet. So each time this model suffers damage from an unsafe wound, roll a d6. If the result is less than the damage inflicted by the attack, the damage is ignored. So if, the, if it suffers four damage and you roll a three or less, it's ignored. So Quantum Shielding is back as well. And like the Resurrection Orbs, I also believe it's got better. I think it's awesome. And Wave of Command is you can add one to the advance and charge and hit rolls of anyone within 12. So it's it's based on the Lord's Will or whichever one it is, but it's within 12 now. The Catacomb Command Barge will cost you 138. So that's pretty good because you do get the Lord on top of it for that. So that's pretty good. Uh, that's the end of the um, HQ choices. Um, very quickly going to run through the troops here. So Necron Warriors are the exact same stat lines they used to be. So are Immortals. Um, the Gorse Flayers, uh, Rapid Fire 1, 24 inches, Strength 4, AP minus 1, Damage 1. The Gorse Blasters, Strength 5, AP minus 2, Damage 1. The Tesla Carbine though is Assault 2, Strength 5, and it still has the 6 plus causing additional hits rules. So the fact that that's two shots now I think you're going to see a lot of Tesla Immortals because you've got those two shots and you've got you know a one in three chance of getting a six for each model. So I think Immortals are going to be better with Tesla now. But to be honest, for the majority, those two are exactly the same now. The only difference is they're better because of how much better reanimation protocols and things like that are now. Per model, uh, they will set you back. An Immortal is roughly nine, 18 points roughly 18 points, and a warrior is roughly 14 points. So they're not bad, pretty pretty good points values. Um, so that's the HQ and the troops done. Um, I'm gonna do now two other parts for the other choices.